Hello everyone and welcome to Uncivil Law. And for today's story, we are covering how California wants to make discrimination on the basis of race legal. Yes, you heard me right. California has a ballot measure on its ballot this year to revoke an amendment that makes discrimination illegal. They want to make discrimination legal in California. Yeah, so this is California Proposition 16, which is attempting to re repeal Proposition 209. So this is an end to affirmative action, apparently, in California. Or this is would be creating affirmative action in California. Let's get started with this. This is going to be entertaining. So this whole story is going to be courtesy of Ballotpedia because it's a good source for, for presenting information on what is. So we're just going to read this and comment along the way. So this is California Proposition 16. It's something the California voters are going to vote on this year for some reason. So California Proposition 16, the repeal of Proposition 209 is on the ballot and will be voted on on November the 3rd, 2020. A yes vote would support the repeal of this proposition. So it would repeal the proposition from 1996. So it supports repealing a prohibition. That's a lot of negatives. But yes, it supports repealing a prohibition against discrimination. Is that like a quadruple negative? Man, that's a lot of, that's that's really confusing just from, how many negatives are in this sentence? All right, it's, it's a supporting a repeal of discrimination against okay, yeah anyways it would make discrimination legal anyway all right so there you go this measure would repeal proposition 209 and so this is the language this is language that currently exists that if you vote yes this language no longer exists so if you like this language you would vote no if you don't like this language you would vote yes so you're voting to strike this language and the language you'd be voting to strike is quote the state shall not discriminate against or grant preferential treatment to any individual or group on the basis of race, sex, color, ethnicity, or national origin in the operation of public employment, public education, or public contracting. So if you'd like public entities in California to discriminate on the basis of race, if you'd like them to be racist, then you'd vote yes. If you'd like them to not be racist, you would vote no. The people who currently support this proposal, the people who would like to bring racism back to California very much, are mostly the Democrats. And you see here, we have supporters who have come out in favor of this. Dianne Feinstein, Camila Harris, Barbara Lee, Katie Porter, U.S. Representative Ro Kahana, Ted Lieu, Alan Lothenthal, Jackie Spear, Jared Hoffman, and a whole bunch of other people that I don't particularly know. But basically, if you're a Democrat, you support this. Organizations that support this. The colleges support it. They'd like to discriminate on the basis of race. The County Board of Education and the Asian Pacific Islander Legislative Caucus. Here are some arguments in favor of racism. Why Why is racism good? Let's find out. According to a Sheer, Shirley Weber, Democrat from the 79th District, Californians have been the, been the fifth largest and strongest economy in the world, but too many hardworking Californians are not sharing in our state's prosperity, particularly women, family of color, and low-wage workers. Assembly, Assembly, Constitution, Assembly Constitutional Amendment 5 will help improve our daily lives by repealing Proposition 209 and eliminating discrimination in state contracts. Well, I'm not sure you know how this works, because discrimination, you're eliminating discrimination. The current law eliminates discrimination. You specifically want to uneliminate discrimination. Okay, so yeah, we're, we're apparently eliminating discrimination by discriminating. ACA5 is about equal opportunity, even though we're specifically not doing that. Uh, this person doesn't know how to read. Since Proposition's 209 packages, California has become one of only eight states that do not allow race or gender to be on many factors. So yeah, we do not allow we do not allow racism or sexism in hiring, and that's bad for some reason. Again, these aren't my words. I'm quoting someone else. I'm repeating what they're saying. They're the ones who want racism. They they they're they're very sad that California does not allow racism or gender based discrimination for some reason. And the ongoing pandemic has some something to do with this. State Senator Stephen Bradford, I know about discrimination. I live it every day. We live it in this building. If there's discrimination in place, it's illegal. 
So why aren't you just using the law that exists to end the discrimination? Because if there were discrimination, you would be illegal. But you specifically want there to be discrimination. Quit lying to yourself and ra say race is not a factor. You want to specifically make race an explicit factor. Uh, okay. And there's some other quotes here. The University of Co the University of California President Janet Napolitano. Janet Napolitano. She was Secretary of something. I forget what. Secretary of Homeland Security or something like that. Yeah. So 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 now she is now she's the University of California President. She says it makes little sense to exclude any conversation of race and admissions. Why? When is the aim of the university's holistic principles to fully understand and evaluate each applicant through multiple dimensions? Some of those dimensions and being racist dimensions, because we want to specifically discriminate on the basis of race. Proposition 209 has forced California public institutions to try and address racial inequality without factoring in race, even where allowed by federal law. The diversity of our university and higher education should and must represent the diversity of the state. Mm hmm. And some other quotes from people. And then we have some people who are opposing, which is not not as long as the list who are in favor of, because there's not as many people. And as you can see, the Republicans. So the Republicans would like to very much not discriminate on the basis of race. Opposing this are sen state sen or state senators Melissa Mel Melendez, Lee Lee Chang, and former Representative Tom Campbell. Arguments. Ward Conley responded to the proposal by saying, I believe we would win a landslide once we let people know what affirmative action is really about. It's discriminating on the basis of race and sex. And remember, to discriminate against is to discriminate in favor of is to discriminate against implicitly. None, nevertheless, if more spaces are held for underrepresented, they must come from overrepresented. Yes. Asian Americans are 15%, yet 13, 39% of enrollees. So Asian Americans are currently overrepresented. So we would be discriminating against Asians because, again, we cannot discriminate in favor of somebody without discriminating against somebody. So if Asians are overrepresented, we would have to discriminate against Asians because they're overrepresented. Again, right now we're doing it strictly on merit because we're literally not allowed to discriminate on the basis of race. So the fact that Asians are overrepresented might have something to do with the fact that they just are more qualified on average. That could be a thing. Maybe they just maybe they just are better at being students on the whole because they come from places that value educationers or whatever. But they're you know, we're not we're literally not looking at their race and they're showing up at almost three to one what you would suggest based on demographics. So since we're not selecting for that, it must be that they just are better through some other reason. Maybe we should look into that. Willinda Wu, based on partial evidence and shallow perceptions of an unrealistic utopia, it's in essence discriminatory. The overriding goal is an undue proposition. A bill that won the popular vote. Yeah, so the people voted for this in the past, but we'd like to discriminate now. We're definitely going to take a hard look and see whether it complies with the 14th Amendment. Yeah, so whether or not it complies with federal law is, of course, a whole other set of problems. But right now, discrimination on the basis of race is okay in education. There's been a couple cases about that. So presumably as to universities, you could do that. So that'd be, at least, at least in graduate school, I'd have to double check when it comes to undergrad, because I think there might've been a split. So when it comes to graduate school, I think it's legal in undergrad, I'd have to double check. Race is a forbidden classification for good reason. Yeah, racism, racism is bad. When you judge someone based on race, that's bad. You shouldn't do that. And that's what I was told, because it determines dignity and worth based on ancestry. Racial pre preference is not transformed by patently unconstitutional into a compelling state interest by label labeling as diversity. The following people have pr pr produced, the following people are racist. The following people are racist and would like to let you know that they're racist. They'd like to, they'd like to let you know that they very much specifically like to discriminate on the basis of race. And they think that race is a value that should be judged unto itself. They think that some races are better than other races. And that value can come from being one of those races. So the, the following people would like to admit to being racist. The San Francisco Chronicle. Nearly a quarter of a century ago, California voters passed a deceptively named California Rights Initiative. Because it gave everyone civil rights regardless of characteristics, assumed characteristics. That's deceptive somehow. But Pro Proposition 209 was not about advancing civil rights. It's about prohibiting the consider. It was about, listen to this. It's about prohibiting the consideration of race and gender in public education. That's bad somehow. 
yeah, it, it, it was bad. We'd, we would very much like to, uh, we would very much like to consider race and gender in public education, employment, and contracting. It's bad that we can't do that. We'd like to consider those things, please. It was about shutting the door on efforts to overcome those institutional barriers. It was wrong in 1996 and is wrong now. The Wall Street Journal, the Wall Street Journal would like to let you know that they think racism, racism is bad, however. Last November in Washington state, they narrowly defeated a similar amendment, though opponents were vastly outspent. California's more liberal state is political class nearly all media will support repeal because they apparently are racist. By judging individuals by the color of their skin is antithetical to equal justice. That's what I thought. Let's hope California's hold on this American principle. Los Angeles Times. We wish, we wish race didn't matter in high, hiring college admissions. It doesn't. It's part of the law. We wish everyone had equal opportunity to access quality education, but they didn't in 1996 and they still don't. Race and gender are still automatically disadvantages that are hard to overcome. We're literally not allowed to consider those things. How, how is it a disadvantage? Helping to shrink the opportunity gap with a tiny leg up doesn't give them an unfair advantage over those already born in head. Okay, so, so you are born ahead or not based on race. Do you see what the Los Angeles Times is saying? They're literally saying that some people are better than other people because they were born a particular race. You are born with an advantage because you are a race. Some people based on race are better than other people. Are we sure that we're not are we sure that we're not part of the clan? The clan would also like to tell you a lot about the inherent advantages of white people. The clan the, the, it's 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 a sad day when you can't tell the difference between the progressives and the clan. Both the progressives and the clan would like to tell you about the inherent superiority of white people and white skin and the inherent advantages of the white race. Also the alt right would like to tell you about these things. Yes, the alt right, the clan and apparently left-leaning progressives would all like to tell you about the inherent advantages of the white people and the white race and how certain people are better off when they are born because they are those races. And certain races are just better than other races, and it's time we accept those as truths. Are, 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 we, sure, are we sure we're quoting the Los Angeles Times and not the Klan or the alt-right? Because I honestly can't tell the difference. The Sacramento Bee... In 1999, 2009, the Proposition 209 passed with nearly 55% of support. That year, Republicans seized on affirmative action as a wedge issue to inflame racial division. Yes, the Republicans flamed racial division by specifically making it illegal to consider race. Wow, that's how racially divisive the Republicans are. We like to specifically make it illegal to consider race. Because we don't think that certain races are born better than other races. Wow, amazing. Masquerading behind civil rights language, which, you know, looks very suspiciously similar to the language in the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which is the federal equivalent of this, in Title VII and Title IX, dealing with, dealing with employment and education, respectively. So Title VII deals with uh, employment, Title IX deals with education, has very similar language to this. So apparently, the 1964 Civil Rights Act was also super racist somehow. Masquerading behind civil rights language, because it's the, like basically the same language, it abolished a key tool by addressing discrimination, by let's discriminate. Then the governor endorsed it as his Republican president, and the California state legislature should have the repeal. Ra raci racism is good, says the Sam S racism is good, says the Sacramento Bee, the Los Angeles Times, the Klan, and the alt right. That's 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 great. And then the California legislature voted for this by two thirds, and that's the end of that story. So that is the end of our coverage of this case or the upcoming ballot measure where California has to decide whether racism is good or bad. And apparently the legislature voted two thirds in each house that racism is good. They would like to tell you that certain races are better than other races inherently from the moment of birth because of those races, and certain races have more value than other races. And so it is on, it is on those who are born with, uh, b born with these privileges to, to give our charity to those of lesser races because they're lesser, you see. And again, this is not my language. I want to make very clear. I do not actually support these things. I'm, I'm describing the implications of these views for all the good it will do me in the YouTube demonetization, which is probably not very much. But apparently, apparently some races are better than others somehow because it is on those of those who are privileged to, to, with our charity and grace, give, our, give to the lessers who are not born 
because they were born with the wrong skin color, because those skin colors are worse. It's up to those with with the better skin color to to be charitable and parental parentalistic and and give favor, give our favor to those who cannot get it for themselves because they were born with inferior skin. Or something. I don't know. I don't understand it because I'm not a racist. I think I think that race is, you know, actually kind of irrelevant. And you should look to the merit of people. And if they are meritorious, then great. And if people are not getting admitted to colleges on a on a fair basis, maybe it has something to do with things that are happening before that point. Maybe it has something to do with the educational environment in the K through 12 schools. Maybe you could do something in fixing that. Or maybe you could look to other things that would do it. Perhaps you could reestablish the family life. That might be good. You know, a strong family life seems to be something that helps give people an edge when they have a secure family life. So maybe you could try to look to that. I don't know. But, you know, what I do not think is a solution, I don't think racism is a solution. And you know what I also don't think? I don't think I am better than someone because I'm white. Amazing. I don't think that I am better than anybody because I'm white. Apparently, that's a controversial statement for some reason. I don't think I'm better or worse than anyone else because of the color of my skin. I don't think the color of my skin makes me an inherently better or more valuable person. Apparently, that's a controversial position in, in, in California for some reason, who would like to, who apparently, by two thirds of each house, would like to say that, no, actually, my position is wrong. And the correct position is that certain people are better than other positions, other people because of race, and we, we need to be racist and sexist again. Apparently, that's the thing we're doing in California. Um, for whatever it's worth, Uncivil Law would like you to very much to vote no on this. So that's the end of our coverage of this case.